Hi, and welcome to this video where I will show you how to email form data using Wappler. I start with a page where I have added some content. As you can see, there is an H1 heading. Please keep this in mind as I create the form. What I want to do is to add a contact form that, once submitted, will be emailed to me as the recipient. I start by adding a row after the last row in the current layout. To make sure that there is a space between the two sections, I add a top margin. Inside the row, I add a column. And proceed to add a card inside the column. I then delete the elements that are not required for this project, leaving me with just the title. The title text is changed to, Contact Form. As I pointed out before, there is already an H1 tag at the top of the page. Following hierarchy guidelines, this should be followed by an H2. Let's see what Lighthouse has to say about this. I go to open the browser, only to be told to first save the file. Once in the browser, I right-click on the page and select, Inspect. Here I go to Lighthouse and analyze the page load. Let us see why we are getting a 98 for accessibility. Lighthouse tells us that the heading elements are not in sequentially descending order. The reason is the H4 card title. I go back to the card heading and change it to an H2. To reduce the font size, I give it a class of H4. Back in Lighthouse, we see that there is now a perfect score. This underlines the importance of a proper hierarchy. Now to add a form after the card heading. Inside the form, I add the first form input for the name. I duplicate this input for the email. After the last form group, I add the text area for the comments. And lastly, I add a row and a column to house the submit button. Save the file to format the code. This step is a habit of mine, it is completely optional. Now to tidy things up. Being a mobile first framework, I go to the smallest screen size first. Here I see that all looks as intended. The same goes for the mobile screen and landscape, and for the tablet. Once I select the larger screens, I would like the form to be slightly small. For this I set the number of columns to 8 with an offset of 2 columns. The form gets a recognizable ID. I will get back to the method and form action, after completing the server side API. Next on the list are the labels and inputs. The label gets assigned a representative text. While the input gets a proper ID and name. There is also a help text that I want to get rid of. But before I do that, let me show you the relationship between the help text and the ARIA attribute of the input. Here we see that the ID of the help text corresponds to the value of the ARIA attribute. The same goes for the email text input. But because I duplicated the name text input, the values are the same. This of course, is a no-no. Because I am deleting the help text, I must also remove the ARIA attribute, Otherwise it would be hanging in limbo and confuse assisted technology. While here, I reword the placeholder text. The email field undergoes the same procedure. Delete the help text. Delete the ARIA attribute. Set the ID, name, 
and placeholder. Time out for another explanation. The ID attribute, which must have a unique value within a page, is used to connect the label to the related form input. But it is also used by the logic within App Connect. Thus, it is mandatory, even without a label. The name attribute is used by the server to identify the form inputs. These values must be unique within a form. Enough talk, on with the task. The text area undergoes much of the treatment of its predecessors, with the exception of the ARIA attribute, which is missing here. For the placeholder, I need to go to the DOM panel. But before I go to the DOM panel, let me go back to the previous form label to enter the correct text. In the DOM panel, I scroll down to the placeholder, where I enter the text. Back in App Connect, I give the button the usual treatment. and set the type to, submit. Lastly, the validation rules. Here I will use the bootstrap framework to style the validation messages. Be mindful though, that this technology is not accessible, since they are not exposed to assistive technologies. The recommendation is to use the server equals side option, or the default browser validation method. I have chosen the server side option, which will be shown as I progress with this video. Right. I select the first form input and in the properties panel, Scroll down to validation rules. Here I can choose from a multiple of different rules. But to keep this tutorial simple, I have gone for the required option, meaning that the field must be populated. The email form input undergoes the same. But this time, I add an extra validation to make sure that it is a proper email address. The message text area also gets the required treatment. To make the form stand out a bit more, I add a background color. In this case I have gone for the body secondary color. This also looks great in dark mode. Save the page. I will return to this page to add the server action, once the server side API has been set up. To continue, I open the workflows tab. Under globals, I right click on mailer and choose to set up the mailer function. Because I am using Node, Wappler installs the required packages. In the Properties panel, I leave the default name for the mailer. If you are using an SMTP server, enter its details, host, port, username and password. These are usually provided by the mail server provider. Most of the hosting providers offer a default mail component, which you can use. Just select server default from the drop-down and you won't have to handle the complicated SMTP setup. Save the file and we are ready to create the API. Right-click on API, where I create a new folder called, Forms. Inside the Forms folder I add an API action. This action is named, Contact. This exposes the contact JSON file UI. The first step here is to get the inputs from the contact form on the client side. In the Properties panel, I select the page where the contact form resides. Then I select the form and select the Import button. Here we see that the inputs have been imported, complete with the validation rules. These validation rules will now also be applied to the server actions. Now to add the data to the email and send it. I select the mailer extension, and drag the send mail option to the plus sign under execute. 
In the properties panel, I leave the mailer name as is. Going down the list, I add the subject. The sender name. The sender email address. The reply email address. And the recipient information. Last of all, the content taken from the message text area. Save the file and we are done here. Now that the API has been created, I return to the page containing the contact form. Here I select the form element and convert it to a server connect form. This allows me to attach the just created API, to be actioned when the form is submitted. and I am done. Now, additionally you can run some event when the form has been successfully submitted. To notify the user that the form has been sent, I will add the notification extension to the page. When using Node, this would typically be placed in the layout page, so that it can be used site-wide. For now, I place it on this page. With the form still selected, I scroll down to Dynamic Events. Here I choose, Server Connect and Success. For the action, I select the Actions Editor. Inside the Editor, I add the Success Notification. The text to show when the form has been successfully submitted. Then reset the form as further proof that the form has been submitted. And that's all. The form will send the email, the user will be notified, and the fields will be cleared. You can add as many dynamic events as you like, such as, show a failure, redirect to another page, etc.